فلذلك فدع واستقم كما أمرت ولا تتبع أهواءهم وقل آمنت بما أنزل الله من كتاب الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So uh, we last left off in uh, Kitab al-Tahara. Thank you. And um, so we, in this, of course, all of Kitab al-Tahara, we could put this in the front of Kitab al-Salah. Because why did we learn about Tahara? Because it's, uh, it's a precursor, it's one of the shart or condition for, for Salah. So we need, to, we, like, we need to have this, or else our Salah is not going to be valid. So, of course, um, some people have put this at the beginning. They just start off with Kitab al-Salah, and the first first part of Kitab al-Salah is uh, Bab al-Tahara. And then you can have all of this under it. And technically it's kind of under it, but since there's so many issues inside of, uh, of uh, Tahara, it usually gets its own chapter, or I mean it gets its own like Kitab um, because of the amount of um, things that are in it. And we'll be starting up if you have the, it'll be 43, page 43, if you're on the, the same, same one as us. Yeah. And so the first thing we'll, we'll talk about, as many of the people then they start up with Kitab al-Salah, is they will start up with the timings for it, just so we know the times for each of the Salah, because this is of the other conditions for the Salah, is that it needs to be in its time. And this is what, uh, uh, what the author, Abu Shuja, uh, Rahimahullah, that he, that he starts off with here. So he says, Kitab al-Salati, as-salatu al-mafroodatu khamsun. And so he says, of course, there's five Salah that are mafroodha, which is, that is it's obligatory, it's farad. And so he says, "Adhuhun wa awal waktiha zawal shams." And so the first one he gives is "Adhuhun," and so he says the the beginning of "Adhuhun" is "Zawal." "Zawal" is the zenith. I'm going to say it's a zenith. A lot of times it'd be like "Zawal" because it's the first time that it goes into decline. It goes into decline, or it's like um, going away. And so this is the the first the first bit of "Adhuhun" is "Zawal shams." And so if we were to um, Anyone got a, a pen to spare? All right, you got a pen? All right. This is, a, this is an example. So if we were to have a stick, we have a stick with us for dhuhr, the way that we could do it is we put the stick up on, a, on, a, on the floor, on the ground or whatever. We see this, and, we, and we'll see that if you have like a sundial or something, you'd see the similar thing. But you'll see that the shadow is going from the beginning, it'll get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter, and then the shadow will stop, and then it will start to grow. And that time, once it stops, this is almost, almost, this is like the, 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 the um, solar noon. Once the shadow comes, there's Dhuhr. As soon as that shadow, it comes smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it starts to lengthen, there's Dhuhr. And this is the way that you know that Dhuhr comes in. Of course, depending on the, the placement that you are on the earth, will depend how big is that shadow. And we'll keep that, that, that length in mind as we're moving in. But we're, we're, imagine that you have a stick, and a stick will always tell you what time it is if there's, of course, there's no clouds. Um, but if you got that shadow from the sun, you can see that the shadow is coming shorter, shorter, shorter. It'll stop, and there's your. That's um, this is that the like that solar noon, and then it'll come up just a little bit. And once it once it goes uh, and starts getting longer again, this is where this is the beginning of the time of Zohar. And um, then he says here that's the beginning of the time of Zohar. Of Zohar is Zawal Shams when it starts that that length of the shadow starts to get a little bit longer. And he says, وَآخِرُهُ إِذَا صَارَ الذِّلُّ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مِثْلَهُ بَعْدَ ذِلِّ الزَّوَالِ And so he says here, the second, the second uh, like the end of it, the end of it, وَآخِرُهُ, the end of it, uh, is if all if that, that shadow that we're talking about, a dhil, the shadow of everything becomes the same length as it. So if we have this, we have this, say we're at a, um, at a solar, um, what is it, like a solar equinox and whatnot in the middle of May or something, I forget what it is. But we have that solar equinox when, when at, uh, at, at, the solar, at the solar noon, we have no shadow. Once we have that no shadow, there's no extra, there's no extra then, we have that no shadow. Once this shadow becomes the same length, becomes the same length as the pole itself, so if I were to lay it down, boom. It's the same length as the pole itself. This is the end. All right, and this is the end of Zuhr. And then, that, then right after that starts um, Asr. And so this is, the, this is the time how you can always tell with Zuhr. Say you have a little bit of a shadow at the, at the solar noon. You have that little bit of a shadow, you take that off, you add that to this. So you lay it down and you add the length of that shadow to that and there's your, um, that shadow that was there at the solar noon, that shadow, you add that to the length of, its, uh, of the thing that you have. 
And so you add that to the end because whatever that is is going to be added to whatever the shadow length that is of, of the, um, say we're using a stick in this. And that will always be the same. And this is the way you can always gauge um, dhuhr. You can always gauge dhuhr. And also this is the beginning of asr. And so this is another way to gauge asr. Um, and so, so this is the, the, end, the end of dhuhr is this time. And also asr begins right after that. So like that next moment is asr. And he says, well, Asun, awal waktiha azziyadatu ala dhilli al-mithl. So he says, the first of its time is an extra, something extra, ala dhilli al-mithl, of the, the shadow that is the same length as this. So as soon as it goes over that, there's the beginning of Asr. Uh, and he says, wa akhirhu fil ikhtiyar ila dhilli al-mithlain. In the end of it, fil ikhtiyar. In fil ikhtiyar, because uh, this is a term for saying of the time that's preferred to pray your prayer inside of. Uh, and so this time is until this dil is two times. So if you were to lay it down, you have one, then you lay it down another time, two times. And you should be praying before this. Um, this is like the time that you should pray. And uh, this is the time that, um, that was shown in the hadith uh, um, that Jibreel showed the Prophet Sallallahu how to, how, what times to pray. And so he prayed it at the beginning of the time, and then he prayed it at the end of the time. And the end of the time here uh, was, was, of, uh, was of this sort. And also, uh, this was um, after this time is not a, not a good time to pray this. It should always be prayed before, before the dil becomes mithlain which is like twice as much. Um, so this is the time that someone should always try to make sure that they keep their, their salat uh, for asr um, before this time. Uh, and after this time, then they're losing out on, on, a, on the reward of them um, coming up with the salat. And, and, so, and also a general principle with all of these times that we talk about, there are multiple times inside of this. So we're talking about the time that your salat is okay to be prayed in. And there's times when your salah is better to be prayed in. And of course, the general principle is to pray it at the beginning of the time because of the, the hadith that is narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu when he was asked what is the best of actions, he said, salat fi awli waqtiha. And this is one of the narrations, fi awli waqtiha. And also in like uh, Muslim, I believe it's uh, ala waqtiha. Uh, and so in, in this narration of fi awli waqtiha, uh, which a lot of uh, a lot of the scholars have said this is a sahih uh, like this this phrasing fi awli waqt. Um, so they took with this that going at and praying at the beginning as soon as you're able to of course have some making wudu getting your clothes on making the then and whatnot but to pray it in that beginning of the time this is the um, this is the time that's fadila that this is the best time to pray and this is of the greatest and most loved actions to Allah and then there's also another time which is ikhtiya and this means that this is, a, this is a time that it's good to pray and you're not losing anything out on this time. This is a good time to pray. And this is as we talked about with Asr, the ikhtiyar is until things become, the shadow becomes twice as long as the object. So that is the, the time for Asr. It should be prayed before this and this is ikhtiyar. And then there's jawaz. And jawaz is the time where you're, you're allowed to pray. You're allowed to pray at that time. There's no, there's no punishment on you for, for doing that. And you're, you're allowed to pray that, uh, that prayer in that time, but it's better for you to pray it in um, before that. And so this would be like after Mithlain, um, or at other times such as like Zuhr, at after the beginning of that Waktan Dhur, uh, and towards the end, this is, a, this is permissible. And then there's um, Karaha, which is of the times that it, like, if you're at the end of the time of um, Asr, uh, at the end of the time of Asr, or you've delayed the Isha prayer to, the, um, to like the beginning, right before Fajr, in that the, there's two Fajrs. There's the false Fajr, and then there's the real Fajr. And so the Fajr, uh, Fajr al-Kadhim, if you delayed Isha to this time, then this is something that would be like um, Karaha. If you um, prayed it in that time before where that um, false Fajr comes, just before the real Fajr, this is the time that it would be Karaha, and like you don't get any reward for that time. That time is no longer giving you a reward, but you coming at the beginning of the time is always going to give you more reward. Uh, and then there's hurma, which is the time, of course, if somebody delays their salah until they can't, there's not enough time left in the uh, in the salah to, or like there's not enough time left in that time to pray the salah. So this is the time like this person has gone into something that's haram. Of course, they have to pray the salah, but them delaying this time has become haram. And this would be the end of jawaz. When that time comes, then that's the end of the time that's permissible or um, that uh, if maybe it was makruh in that time as well. And then, of course, if anyone finds any single time within before the next salah that they can say Allahu Akbar and they can come into salah, then this is the like this is the waqt al idraq or darura. So if somebody, say a woman, um, she her period ended right before um, Maghrib. 
And so she needs, now she's time, if she has enough time to make a shower and to, uh, to make ghusl and to, to clothe herself and to pray, she needs to pray that and she needs to say, Allahu Akbar, you know, and to start that prayer before that time. So her, at the end, if there's not enough time, like say there's only like two, two minutes left, of course there's not, that, like, there's not enough time for her to even make the ghusl uh, from, the, from the get-go, but if she has like maybe 10 minutes, she, maybe it doesn't fit all of her salat, but she needs to start at least. Um, and so this is uh, this is what you call waqtul idrak, of course, because the time uh, Allah has made the in the salat kan al mu'minina kitab and malkuta, and so that this is something that is um, that is like obligatory on the believers in a way that is malkut um, that's on certain times. So this time always needs to be prayed, and if there is something lacking, say um, say like we talked about before, if somebody doesn't have tahara, you know, and they don't have water and they don't have dirt, they still pray their salat in that that state. They don't have they don't have water they don't have dirt they still pray the salah no no matter what if your if your mind is with you you pray the salah um, and of course if, uh, unless you're a woman on, on their period and whatnot um, and, but this is something that uh, of course needs to be done in, in these times and even if you have just a little bit of time left you still do it uh, and it should be in that time all right and so so we stopped at asr and this was the time that we talked about and then he says uh, so this is the the last time in the ikhtiyar which is the time that it's uh, preferred to do it uh, is as uh, is until the shadow becomes twice the length of the object uh, and he says here fi uh, jawaz uh, which is the time that's permissible until the, the sun sets and there's a little bit of um, like it would be until the salat can be prayed within the time before the sun sets that's the jawaz any time after that like right before the sun sets if you can't pray the salat then this would not be prim it's, of course you have to pray it but this is you, you would fall into something haram by delaying it do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, does the object have to be a uh, specific size or specific? It's, it's the same thing. It's the, the length of the object mm -hmm. uh, against the shadow. Okay. See, whatever the, the, maybe you got a pole that's sitting up. Maybe you got a pole, like a, a light pole or something. Maybe you got a stop sign. All of this, you can kind of see. You can kind of gauge, it, or a car. You can gauge kind of with your eyes. If you see how that, that, that shadow starts to lengthen, once that shadow becomes that way, or if you also see the sun, when the sun loses its um, goldness and turns into like an orangish thing, then this time uh, is a time that it's preferred to pray before this. You shouldn't uh, wait, uh, wait to do this because this is what the Prophet Sallallahu he used to pray and when the sun was still um, height, like it was something that was still bright and, um, and hadn't lost its, its shine. Um, so this is the time that um, people should always strive to do that. And the, the, the Hanafis, they do have a, a certain, um, their view about the time of Asr is different and they basically delay it to this time that is makro. So if you are in a place where the the masjid, he's gonna, they're going to pray that salat in the time that's makro, it's better for you to pray with them in this time that's makro than for you to pray by yourself beforehand and leave the masjid and leave the jama'ah. So it's better for you to pray the jama'ah than to do this. And they do this and this is um, the the evidence, I don't I don't see the strength of their, their evidence within. I haven't gone straight uh, deep into the, the Manakasha. But like the the evidence that does come, that the time that the Prophet used to do this is very clear. It used to be before that time. Now when the when the sun was still bright in the sky and it hadn't turned asfar or like hadn't turned um, like orangish. Um, and so Wallahu alam. But always of course the, the jama'ah is better than um, that time if you ever get stuck in a scenario with that. And I, I've got stuck in that scenario before. But this is something that's better to do it with the jama'ah than to leave the jama'ah just so you can get the, the benefit of the time. Or if you want to do the best of both worlds, you can pray it at the beginning of that time. And then if you find the jama'ah, then you can aid uh, salah. And then you can bring it back. You can redo the salah in that time. You'll get the reward for that. Um, uh, for that and it'll, you'll get both of those rewards. Yeah. Would you get both the rewards if you intended like if you intention alone? The intention for... Like if you said, okay, the only reason why I'm delaying it would be... For the words for Jama, yeah. But you would intend, you would re-intend the Asr prayer with the Jama. And you would get you would get the reward for all of that. And you so... Without praying it the first time? The first, the first one would be praying. And it would, it would relieve you from the... It would relieve you from the obligation. Then you bring it back. Then you're praying it. And that's obligatory. And you're getting the reward for that. And you're not missing out on the reward for the time. 
that makes sense. So there's also a, there's a hadith that, um, in this meaning that there will be there will come a time when people when the leaders will kill the salat. Uh, you uh, like you meet to in a salah, which uh, which is like meaning that they delay the salah from their time, and so the Prophet says, and he he commanded the people, if you then what what should we do in this area? And I believe it's the Sahabi that was narrating the hadith. He said, pray it first by yourself, and then pray it with the people afterwards. So this is the um, this is the solution to that issue. And of course, you get more reward from that than if you were just to pray it with the people. And of course, praying with the people is better than praying by yourselves because it's, of course, that's uh, 27 times more than to pray in the masjid with people. Can you do that regularly for a long period of time? What's that? Can you do that regularly? For yeah, for months? people, if you want to do that, yeah, yeah. there's no. If you're in a if you're in a community where people are are, are praying it late, and there's no, you, there's no like talking about it, you're not going to find another masjid that does that. Then go to pray with them. Pray with them, I and mean, if you want to pray at the beginning of the time to not leave that, that get rid of that time, or if you're scared about the the time maybe leaves you or something of that sort, then you prayed it already. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allahumma yeah. It's 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 much, it's like makro in this in this case. They take a hadith and they understand it in a different way than uh, there's asfiru bi fi subh or bil fajr. Hadith means like to it means to like asfiru, um, which means to make fajr like bright or asfar. Mm -hmm. And so they think that means delaying. But the meaning of that hadith that the rest of the people look at all of the, the evidence that the Prophet Sallallahu used to pray in fi ghalas, uh, when it was very dark. We'll talk about Fajr in just a second. But this, is, um, but this hadith would be understood to make the, the salat long. You start in the ghalas at the beginning of that time, and then you, you lengthen the qira'ah. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to recite with, a lep, uh, with over 100 ayat, maybe 100 ayat in um, Fajr. So of course, like, to have like 100 ayat, if he's reciting 100 ayat, maybe this, it's going to be like maybe 20 minutes or so. And from that time, from the beginning to the, time, the end of it, for him to lengthen the salat, this is of course, this is something that's good. But it doesn't mean delay the salat. As uh, Firu, it doesn't mean to delay the salat. As, this is the majority when they look at this hadith. But the Hanafis, they take this hadith and then they, they use it to delay the salat from that, um, uh, from that original time. But the actions of the Prophet ﷺ are clear that he used to pray at this time, all the time. Can you say that? Um, so uh, this is this is. We'll talk about that in, in just a second here. And so this is. Um, so we talked about Asr, and this is what happens um, with the with the end of. Uh, so we talked about the end of that time is when the, the the sun goes down, or the time where you have enough time to pray the prayer before the sun goes down. That's the end of the time of Jawaz. And so then, uh, of course, Maghrib, which in comes from uh, Guru Bashams, which is uh, like the sunset. Well, Maghrib, waqtuha wahidun. And so this is the view of the, the Shafi Madhab in uh, Fil Jadid, uh, in the new Madhab that Imam Shafi had when he was here in Masr, uh, in Egypt. He had two Madhabs, one when he was in Baghdad and one when he was in uh, Masr. And his new Madhab was that the waqt is only one time. There's only one time for. Um, for Maghrib, and he says here, he says, well, So right after the sun sets, this is the time for Maghrib. And he says, And so he says, And with the time that it would take you to, to make the Adan, you add dinu, and we uh, and make wudu, we yastura aura, cover yourself. Uh, and like make the ikama, and then you pray uh, five rakat. And this is taking into consideration the two after, after the the salat of maghrib. There's two sunnah afterwards, so this is five rakat. And if you were to count the two rakats um, beforehand, because the Prophet said said salat before maghrib and whatnot, then this would be seven. And uh, like this would be seven in that case. Uh, and it's basically just enough for you to do all the things to get ready for the prayer and pray it right away. And that's the time for, for Maghrib. And this is the, this, he leaves it here. And of course, the um, uh, Imam Shafi is famous for his saying that if it is a hadith, fahuwa madhabi. And so, of course, like the, there's other hadiths that are very clear uh, that, the, that, the, that this comes until the end of the Shafiq. Uh, Shafiq uh, al-Ahmar, which is the when there's still a little bit of red left in the sky, then this is something that when that um, 
uh, when that red leaves the sky, then the time has ended for Maghrib. And we have all of that time until that red that's left in the sky from the sunset, then you'll see this kind of, there'll be like a reddish hint into the sky. Once this leaves, then the time for Maghrib has left. And this is the old madhab that um, Imam Shafi had. And he took, he took the hadith of um, Jibreel when, uh, when Jibreel, he had the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi pray. Uh, and he had him pray at these different times. And at the beginning, he said, this is, um, this is the time. Then the next day, he delayed it. And then, then the next day, he prayed at the beginning of time. The next day, he delayed it. And he started off with um, Dhuhr. As the author here, he starts off with Dhuhr, like following that hadith. He started with Dhuhr. He prayed at the beginning of the time. And then uh, he prayed Asr at the beginning of its time. And he prayed Maghrib after the sunset. Uh, and then he prayed Aisha after the Shafiq al-Ahmar. And then the next day, he prayed um, Dhuhr before the before um, Asr and then um, delayed these things somewhat and so it's all delayed except for Maghrib was the same time and so then Aisha was was delayed as well and so they uh, so Imam Shafi took with this view and he saw that it, uh, Maghrib was something that should be prayed in that one time um, and but with the, bringing together all the hadiths, the, the other like the the, the madhab, when they look at the adilna, they'll say like his old view was what the what the evidence um, actually points more towards. And this hadith of Jibril is actually showing the time of what is best. So we'd say this is the best time to pray it. And so not all of these times are actually we don't get all of the like the that you're not allowed to pray in this time because um, Jibril didn't pray at this time. Um, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But rather, this is the time that we take that this is the best time for someone to pray. Um, and so this is for Maghrib, and the, the old madhab is the one that is more timid. Um, and I believe there's a wedge in the new madhab. But this is something that on the new madhab, this is uh, well known that there's only one time for Maghrib, and it should be prayed right on its time. Um, just enough for someone to get ready and do it. Um, and then for um, for the for the old madhab, this is what most of the like the scholars will hold this view, and that's roughly about like an hour and forty minutes or so um, for the for the red to leave. And so then the and then he says here, well Aisha, and so we're going into the next one. Uh, he says, well Aisha, awal waqtiha ila ghab shafaq al ahmar. And so the shafaq uh, shafaq al ahmar is that reddish hue in the sky. Once that reddish hue leaves the sky. Then this is the this is the beginning of Aisha, and so this is either um, Gaba, which means leaves, Shafiq al Ahmar, and so this is the time when when that leaves. Then this is the beginning of Aisha, and sometimes this can be hard for us to find in a in a like a light pollution, like the environment that we have, light pollution. We you uh, cut and like this is something we we go off of the and the calculations, and, um, so we take the calculations. This is fine. There's no problem with the calculations. Uh, and this is this is known like when when if there was going to be um, if there was going to be clouds the same thing we go off with calculations there's no problem with going off with calculations in this thing and also the prophesy and we talked about when the when the dajjal comes with some of the fitna that he comes that you won't be able like a day will be like uh, like a, a very very long period of time a single day and they say what do we do about the salah he said you cut them uh, uh, like to make that calculation as if it was a regular day. And so this calculation-based method, this is something that is, uh, that is good for people to do. And the same thing for Isha. If Isha doesn't come in because someone is um, so far north or so far south in the, in the, the summer that there's no Isha, then this, they take the closest Isha that's to them, and then they go off at that time. Um, so there is a time between um, the end of Maghrib and the beginning of Isha, so. The it, on the on the new madhab, yeah, there would be a time between these two where one is bef, uh, one is ended and then the next one begins. But on the old madhab, which is like the, the the stronger view, and then it starts when the other one ends. Okay. The other one ends and this starts right afterwards. And for the madhab, where it's, there's an ending for Maghrib and then there's some time before the beginning of Isha, um, this time of praying Maghrib is it like makruh or? No, no, it's not makruh. There's no evidence for it to be makruh. No, it's totally fine. There's no problem with that. So you can, you can pray Maghrib until the Adhan of Isha? Uh, of course, the time before the Adhan. Until you're, yeah, but of course, to delay it um, to that point is, uh, it's better for you not to delay it all the way to that. And also some of the calculation methods are different. Yeah. When you look at some people, like if you have a calculation of like Om of Qur'a, like this is one calculation method, and they'll give you 10 minutes later than what they do here. And so, like, just to leave the, the difference of opinion, get a little bit before, like, at least leave a, like, uh, at least, like, 15, 20 minutes leeway, uh, just because of the difference of the calculation methods, and we don't see that. Uh, that's always the best thing to do in that case. Wallahu uh, 
Um, and so this is this is Isha. And so this is the, the beginning of the time, is when that redness leaves the sky. And we can calculate that, and that's, and that's fine. وَآخِرُهُ فِي الْإِخْتِيَارِ إِلَى ثُلُثِ اللَّيْلِ And then he says here, in the end of it, فِي الْإِخْتِيَارِ This time that's preferred to pray, is until ثُلُثِ اللَّيْلِ And you would take this, um, and you would take the, this breaking up of the layl from the beginning of Maghrib. And so, and some of the, some of the, others, um, the other scholars in the Shafi'i Madhab, they say no until the nisf, nisf al-layl. They say that the ikhtiyar is to the nisf al-layl, mutasif al-layl, like midnight, um, like, the, like the solar midnight. Um, and so you would take this time from, um, from Maghrib, and you would take that to, to Fajr, and you break that in half, and there you go. There's, there's that middle time, you shouldn't delay it before that. Uh, and this is, um, and this is the this is the time that you. It's best not to delay that because it's um, uh, like this is a chance that someone might maybe they fall asleep and they're not going to pray. And of course, if someone knows that if they fall asleep, they're not going to pray this salah, and the time for that salah is coming, then it's haram for them to go to sleep. So if this person knows, they know that there's like maybe there's like two hours left before fajr. They know if they sleep right now, they're not going to be able to wake up to pray Aisha. They haven't prayed it yet. So they got to pray this. They got to pray this prayer before they go to sleep because that's haram for them if they know that they're not going to wake up, or if they're pretty sure that they're not going to wake up. Um, and this is, of course, if they if they if they think, oh, I'm probably gonna, I've got time and I can probably take a nap now and I can wake up. And normally they're pretty sure that they can do this. This is okay, but um, but the the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to dislike kani akrahun nom kablaha. Like um, before praying the isha, he used to dislike going to sleep before praying isha. And it's the same thing from Maghrib as well. Like he used to dislike, um, he would take that same, dis, um, that karaha, he would take that for that. Um, and also speaking after Isha as well, unless it's something that's good, um, then this is also a time that it's, it's best for someone not to, like of course, um, like speaking after Isha, if it's something such as like hadith or fiqh or ulum or studying or something, this is something that's good. But just like, just chatting with people, just talking away the night, this is something that is makro. Um, and so, also, in, unless it's something that's good, of course, if you're with your wife or you're talking with her or something, and that's well, that's fine, or with your family and whatnot for something that's necessary, that's good, that's fine. But just to to chat along the night, as some people just they fill up the night with nonsense. Of course, this is something that's makro. Um, and so, and then to the end, he says, "Wafil jawaz ila tulil fajri thani," and he says here until for the jawaz, that time that is permissible, until the tulil fajri thani, which is the the second fajr, which is the real fajr, a uh, fajr sadiq. And so, this is uh, it's permissible up until that time to pray isha. Of course, as I mentioned before, it's makru um, after the first fajr. So it's makru to pray to delay the prayer and to pray it after the the first fajr. Uh, so there's that first fajr, which is kathib. In the first fajr that's kathib, there'll be a light that comes straight up in the sky, and then it goes away. And then the fajr that's sadiq, it comes out like this. And it comes out uh, like that. And I, I haven't been out in the, the wild for a while to see this. So if anyone does find it, and they can give me a nice picture of what the fajr, kathib, and sadiq is, then that'd be great. Um, so, uh, but yeah, and because of light pollution, we usually don't see this. And so, speaking of Fajr, we'll talk about that um, here since this is the next time. He says, And so, Subh uh, is like also known as Fajr. Subh, these are two names for the same thing. And the first, the beginning of its time is Tulul Fajr Thani. So, like when that, that second Fajr, Sadiq, Fajr Sadiq, when it comes out, and that's the one that has the light that comes out this way. Um, and so, a couple notes about this. Um, this is something that a lot of people have different takdir. Like they have, um, they've done calculations for this. And there's different calculations that are out there. The calculation that Masur used is, is wrong. Like 19, there's nowhere in the world that you'll find 19 works. The, the, they use the, the daraja or like the, the degree 19, um, that's what Masur uses. 19, it doesn't work. Like this, there's nowhere, you'll never find a 19 that works in the world. If you do find a 19, let us know. But we've never found anywhere, no one has ever been at 19 degrees before the sunrise, 19 degrees before that, when that sun is at a 19 degree angle before that, this doesn't give us fajr. And every single angle is about like four minutes. But at 16, okay, this is maybe. This is maybe, and this is like 16 or 15, this is good. So um, when it comes to fajr, and I don't, I don't know exactly what happened with Egypt, but um, everyone else has it around 15 and a half 
or 16. Like I think I'm pretty sure like Mecca, uh, Mecca and like Umar Quran, the, the way their calculation method is like um, 16. This is fine, inshallah, there's no problem with that. And 15 is like, it's even better. But uh, of course, like we use calculations, there's no problem with this, we have to. Um, but for the 19, it's, it's very far. It's very far removed. If anyone finds it, that it actually works, then great. But I'd, I've never heard of any single person who's ever been in a place that used that degree of 19, the calculation of Egypt, that it actually works. And this is, it, you can't, sometimes the, chip, the systems, you just don't change them. But uh, take, in, take that into consideration if you're praying. Uh, and most of the time it's not a problem because this is only, what is this, like this is about 10 minutes or something that it's going to be that difference, like about 10 minutes. Um, or like at the, most, at the most like like 12 minutes if you're going to really go into it. There's no problem with this except in Ramadan usually because Ramadan is the time that everyone wants to go to sleep so that as soon as they give the then here, they usually eat and they go to sleep. This is, this is known. Um, and so like this is the only time that you'll, you want to make sure that like you've at least waited to the time of like Umar Qur'an, like waited to this time before you pray your Fajr prayer. Um, and if they do pray this before this, this is um, this is no this prayer is is not in its time. And this is this is something that happens here, and it does. And the only time it really is a problem is um, because almost everybody waits 15 minutes at least um, to to pray the prayer before they pray it here in Egypt. So it's not usually a problem except in in Ramadan. Um, but don't go off of the 19, the 16 or the 15 and a half is the better the better version of um, going off of that calculation method. Um, and they, you can go off the, the Mecca. And there's usually, like, if you're on a phone or something, you can always just put on the, the Mecca version, and this is good, inshallah. Or the, the, the people that have actually went, went out there and studied it, a lot of them have said that the American Association method, like, this is the, the strongest. Um, the American Muslim Association, uh, this is the, the best, most accurate uh, one. I think this is 15 and a half, to be honest. Um, so. So these are these are two options, but of course, like um, the if you if you were in Mecca and they prayed at this time, there's no problem with that, inshallah. Um, and so then he says here, going back to the the end of this time now, he says, like the uh, the the end of it in its uh, preferred time, ilal isfar, until the, the isfar is when the the sun actually has given light to the land, so you can now see what's going on around you. This is the when it comes to this time then this, you should, you, know, you should try to pray it before this time comes out, where the sun is light. Uh, and this is um, the beginning of the time for the Hanafis. This is their, <laughs> their beginning of their preferred time. Um, but this, it's, it's narrated that the Prophet he, he used to pray in the, in the time where it was, very, it, was, it was very dark until the person at the end of it, he could barely see the person who's sitting next to him. Like it was such a, it was such, it was so dark that the person, when he's when he's sitting in salah, he can barely know who's next to him by looking, and also that the the women that were going returning back because um, some of the sahabiyat, they would go and they would pray the salah and and, and the jamaah uh, with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They wouldn't be known. You just see shadows. Like you you wouldn't know who's who, and so of course like this is that time that was known that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do a lot. So of course this is the time that it's the best time to do. And this is, a, this is like a proof against the, the, the Hanafis, if the Prophet used to do this a lot, then this is always the, the best way. And if somebody does bring it, like they lengthen the prayer, this is the meaning of the hadith, and, and the majority they would, they would look at that hadith as firu bil fajr, means to lengthen the salah until that it would reach that, that qira'ah, or that reciting, reaches a, a longer period of time until like by the time the salah is ended, that we have reached this time. And of course, if someone starts before this time, then they have gotten the, the, the benefit of this. And if they go into the time of, at the end of ikhtiyar, and they lengthened it until this time, there's no, that's only benefit, that's good for them. It's the, it's the time when they start is that we're looking at. And he says, وَفِي الْجَوَاسِ إِلَى تُرُوِي shams." And so, and then in what's permissible, until the, the, the sun comes out. And this is uh, from the beginning of the peak of the sun. When the disc comes uh, um, and pokes up, and this is the time that it is, um, and that is permissible to pray until then. And of course, um, there's another, uh, there's a hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, "Whoever men adraka raka qabla al-gurub al-shams, fakad adraka al-asr or al-kamaqal." That whoever got, whoever made a raka before um, the sun went down, then he's and then he's got the salah. Like he made the salah, and the, and the salah is in uh, is asr. He made it. And it's time, or in the same thing also before the sun comes up. And so um, making sure that, of course, we should never delay these things. But if you get us, if you get the raka in, then it's like as if you put, you prayed that at least that raka uh, as as would be considered a debt. 
uh, and this is the, the view of the Shafi Madhab, if you got one raka in um, before the um, before like the sun sets or before the sun rises, then you have gotten the, the salah and the rest of it is kind of just repeat repetition of that and your salah is in it um, like of course you shouldn't delay it to that point, but it would be considered a debt as opposed to um, qada. Like a debt is when something is done in its time and qada is something that is done after its time has already ended and you're making it up. So this is this is what has to do with the the timings um, for for the salat, and of course he'll come back and he'll talk about the times that are makru uh, after a few chapters, inshallah. He'll talk about the times that's makru to pray in, uh, and that will come up later. And so the next thing he's going to go into is uh, of the conditions for salat, and of course this is very important. And he talks about the conditions for wujub salat, which is um, these conditions. We will talk about them here in salat, but these are also conditions for taklif in general. Um, for for us to be uh, uh, held responsible, these are also the same conditions here, and so this is actually um, something that's important when uh, uh, that is talked about in usulifik. Uh, for who is the who are the ones that are um, who are the ones that are commanded to obey, you know, and that they're held accountable. So he says here, fasm wushra'itu wujub salat thalathatu ashia, and so he says that for the conditions for salat to be obligatory. For the salat to be obligatory, there's three conditions here. He says, number one, al-Islam, and number two, wal-Bulugh, and then number three, al-Aql. Uh, and then he says here, wa huwa haddu taklif And this is the definition of taklif. Like this is the, the things that need to be here for a person to be held accountable. They need to have these three. One is Islam, and so like of course the person who, if they haven't become Muslim yet, then once they become Muslim, we're not going to tell them you need to make up all these salat. This is something, when we talked about it in Sul, we talked about the person, if they die in the state of Kufr, then they are held accountable for all the salat that they missed. But as far as the person, when it comes to our actions, if they become a Muslim, then once they become a Muslim, they start from there. And what before that, Islam was not something that they were, that was held obligatory as far as their actions because it's forgiven for them. And when the Usul looks at it, they say if this person died as a kafir, he's um, also going to be punished for taqib salah, for leaving salah. He's going to be punished for that. So this is from one view of like, do we command this person to make up a salah? No. It wasn't obligatory on him until he came into, uh, until he came into Islam. Uh, and then from another side, uh, then we'd say like, uh, this person is forgiven for all that, that salah that came before. And so that's the first one here is Islam. And of course, the person needs to... Um, uh, and then the next one is Baluk. Yeah, you had a question about Islam? Yeah, what if someone, uh, for instance, uh, apostated? They would need to make up all the Salah. That they missed. Yeah. yeah, because they already knew that Salah was obligatory, and this is something that, and, and, in general, the, the apostate it, is, not given, is not given a free card for him being stupid. Mm. You know, like, uh, like this is, if, and also the Psalm that he missed, he needs to make that up. Also, if there was a Kaya he missed, he needs to make this up. And so um, they're not, they're not, they already, they, they were in Islam. They saw the Islam before it. So they're held at a different status than someone who wasn't uh, like Kafir Asli. Now the person who is a, a non-Muslim from the get-go, he is given a lot more like leeway with what happens beforehand and whatnot. But for someone who's been in Islam, they tasted Islam. And then to leave it, they know that this is a, a, obligatory on them. So this doesn't leave them because they come back. Of course, uh, this, not, this should never be something that prevents someone from going, uh, to coming back to Islam. But at the same time, this is, this is not like a free card for someone to say, oh, I'm going to try something. You know, it's like, billah. Um, but yeah, so if someone did leave Islam and then they came back to Islam, they need to make these up. Uh, and, and if they, uh, this is something that, also the same thing with Siyan, like all their fasting and whatnot, they would need to make that up as well. And, yeah. What if uh, someone had like, you know, a couple of years of, not practicing, but they missed like almost not every single salah, but many, many salah. Like many, many, many salah. Yeah, the 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 Shafi opinion is that this person needs to make up all of their salah. Anything that they're sure that they missed, they need to make it up. The uh, like the the fatwa, like there's there's a lot of times there's the there's the the fatwa which is for the people. And then there's the the rulings according to like the madhab itself would say this. Mm -hmm. And then the fatwa is that this person, when they make their toba, they make sincere toba, mm -hmm. and then they start from there. Um, and so Allah Allah Alam. And also this would this is the fatwa that um, the, uh, Dr. Uh, Labib Najib he gave this. He talked about this in a uh, in a 
he kind of gave a, an understanding of this. But he says, of course, like closing the door for Toba, or for and like opening the door to like yets, like someone to despair when they have like all of this on their plate. This, of course, not the this this goes against the like the makars of the Sharia, yeah. like the, the the main points of the Sharia. So of course, um, holding this and saying this person made Toba for what he missed. And um, like the benefit, what he should do is he should try to do as many extra salah as he can to make up for that what he did. And also looking at the, the hadith that the Prophet said of the first things that someone will be held accountable on the day of um, Qiyamah, Yom um, Qiyamah is that they'll be, held, they'll be looked into their salah. And if there's anything missing from the obligatory salah, then Allah will look into the nawafah. And we'll take that to make up the naqs in this. And so looking at this hadith, like to put that, to make sure that this person does extra. You know he missed up. And of course, like this is going to be hard for him to count all the days and all the salat and do it all over again. Um, but for him to try to to do ijtihad and try to make sure that he gets up and um, does extra salat to make up for that, this is also good too. Yeah, Allah uh, Taala. And so, yeah. So here's the first one was Islam, and so this is for the salat to become obligatory. And of course, for the the kafir asli, this is not obligatory for him. Uh, even though we call him to it and call him to Islam and we call him to, to pray and everything in the Sharia, uh, we'll call him to that. And of course, uh, as I mentioned before, in the usul, they would say, yes, all of these things are obligatory for everyone. Uh, but in, in fiqh, like the actual application, until they become a Muslim, we don't, we don't command anyone to do anything. Um, and so here the well, bulug, and this is also the next thing, and bulug. Bulug is coming of age, and reaching of age happens for everyone. Uh, and for like, there's two things that happens for everybody. One is that they reach 15 years, and these years are hijri years. This is lunar years. Not, uh, this is not the, the solar calendar, um, but rather it's uh, the lunar years. 15 years, this person is bulug, barik. And if it's not 15 years, then whenever before that, or then this is like the, the last thing. 15 years, if he, none of these other things happened, then he's, he's bad like at least at 15 years. But before that, if any time that semen accidented, so any many that accident from a man or a woman, um, then in this case, then this person has become bad like. So any wet dream, or even if they did it themselves for some reason, any time that the semen comes out there, from now on, they are um, they're bad like, and that they're held accountable for everything from that point. Um, and so this is, and also for a woman, you add to this uh, height menstruation. This, this would, whatever comes first, this is what makes that person accountable, and from then on they're accountable um, if, they, if they still, of course, have the akal. And this is the last one, well akal, which is, of course, like sanity, that they, they're able to differentiate things and whatnot, they have their wits about them. And so, uh, and of course, the akal here that is mentioned is not mean that someone is, um, is without, uh, what do they say, uh, like a mental illness. This doesn't mean this person is not mentally ill. Like a lot of times the, the mental illness in the West very muwassa. <laughs> Everybody's bipolar. You get one person to talk to anybody who's bipolar, you know. And so, this this is very open. No, this person is. He's, if you told him this is right and this is wrong, he knows what he understands what you're saying and he knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah so, um, so this is that's the the meaning here of akal, uh, of course. And so, when the person has this akal about him, then he's uh, and these things are obligatory for him. Uh, and of course, he says here, this is the definition of taklif. And of course, there's a couple, there's a couple hadiths about this, um, and that uh, that if somebody is, uh, when it comes to taklif, there's a couple different hadiths. One is that the person until that in the light of an ummati al khata wa nisyan umma stukriha alay. So we take this that Allah is forgiven for the ummah wa al khata, like the mistakes that he makes not intending. Al khata is different than a khatiya. Khatiya is something that someone intended to do and they did it wrongly. Like they intended to do this thing that they knew was wrong. This is a khatiya. Well, khata is something that they didn't mean to do and they did it. Uh, when nisyan, and nisyan is something that they forgot. They forgot something, okay. And we must tukriha alayhi, which is the things that they are, um, like they're forced to do, coerced. Of course, coercion has a, this is a whole, is a whole class about the, the um, what is actual coercion. But in general, it's if something if something is imposed upon someone and they are given a, they're given a threat that someone can actually carry out this threat against them in a serious manner that is um, that someone like them would be seriously imposed or like impaired by this, not that their friends would think bad about them. You know, like this is not a it's not an excuse. And this, and this is sad that I heard I before coming here uh, and studying, I heard that there was kids in uh, high school. They're scared that their friends are going to laugh at them if they pray. So they're like, can we just pray our salah afterwards? No, this is not, this is not um, uh, ikra. 
This is this is uh, you being uh, <laughs> this is like Jabed. <laughs> this this person is uh, like a coward. Um, no, but he needs to pray a salat, and this doesn't this doesn't give him that excuse. Um, but the, but if, um, this is of the things that they they need to do. Uh, and so then the other one also is of the person that is insane. Also the Rufi al Karim and Talath. Um, and then the, the person who is insane until he comes to his senses, and the person who's asleep until he wakes up, and of the the sabi until he's bedek, and, and it's in a different order. But um, these are the other three. And putting these together, this is all of what taklif will be in, uh, will be inside of these things. So once these things are all taken into consideration, then this person is held accountable. Okay, you have a question. How about bulu? Um, would it be the does it have to be that 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 like semen came out, or does it be like the, the like the capability of, like, or like the production of it? It has to be that it came out, it exited. Khruj and many, in Zen and many, is what they say. It needs to have actually come out. Not the fact that this person, um, yes, we do have a hadith of the 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 kids um, from the from the kufar that were being um, from the from the Yehud that they went against and they broke the act and they went against the treaty and they um, they did treason against the Medina and the Prophet Sallallahu So when he looked at these people, what did they do to figure out who's who's Balak and who's not? Yeah, they checked to see if there's pubic hair. Mm -hmm. But this this was for them and this is not a situation that we take for for us. This is because um, normally if you're going to ask them are you are you Balak or not, this is a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. So this was a way to, to, to make sure, this is just like a, a way to see that this person is Balak or not. But um, the Shafi opinion, they don't take this as a proof for one of the things that um, makes someone Balak is that they have pubic hair. This is not something that give, that makes someone Balak. It's the actual inzal of many that makes them Balak. So they, even if they're capable of... Even if they're capable, okay. and they haven't done it yet. Okay. So we say like technically we would say like a woman is capable of um, menses at nine years old. You know, like we'd say, like in general, at the youngest that immenses what happens, like nine years old. Maybe she personally isn't that way, but whenever it happens, that's when it starts. And this is Qadrullah. Uh, so this is uh, this is in general the the terms for taklif, and also just to note about children. Children, of course, should be um, taught the prayer at seven, and then they should be like beaten lightly. Um, but it should be forced upon them when they're at ten. And if that person is praying from this time, then whenever he does actually become like embedded, he's already going to be used to prayer. And this will be something. And of course, the same thing with all the other actions of the Sharia. He should already be used to them. And the women should already be used to bear, wearing, the, uh, wearing the hijab properly. And when they're, when they're a young girl, before they come into the age when she says, oh, I got my period. Like, she should already be used to it before that happens. Um, so that's not something that is new. You know, it should be something that's, um, that, she, that, they're, that everything is used to that person, as well as they should be prohibited from doing um, things that are wrong. Uh, in general, and they should be punished for those, those things. This this doesn't give an excuse to leave your kids to the wild until they become of age, uh, as um, they could could be understood sometimes. They say, "Oh, he's not bad yet, so I don't need to do tarbiya." No, the, the person should be um, doing tarbiya from the from the very get go, and that makes it easier from when the time that the the pen is writing uh, for this person their bad deeds that he's already used to this, and he should be um, ready for that. All right. And so the next thing he talks about are the, uh, he's going to talk about some of the other salawats. So we talked about the times for the obligatory salat, and now he's going to talk about some of the, the mustahab salat. And there are, in general, there's, there's a category which is the rawatib, and the rawatib are the ones that the Prophet ﷺ used to do always. He would always do these throughout the day, and he'll have these, he'll, he'll mention these inside of this, and he'll also mention these, um, uh, he'll add some other ones alongside of that as well. And the first one that he says here, he says, وَالصَّلَوَاتُ الْمَسْنُونَاتُ خَمْسٌ And what he means here that are مَسْنُونَاتُ, he means the salawat that are done in, in group. So these first um, five that he gives, these are the ones that are done in groups, together, that are, that are مَسْنُونَاتُ. That they're sunnah, and they're not something that is obligatory. And of course the Prophet ﷺ before when he was asked about uh, salawat, that, uh, that there, was, there was five salat, and uh, after he told this to the Arabi that asked him about this, he said, um, is there anything else that is on me? And he said, no, except if you want to go extra. And so like, so this is the, we take this, this hadith, that there's only five that are obligatory, these five that are obligatory, of course, um, Juma is from them. Uh, we'd, we'd say that like for, for Yom al-Juma, Juma is, is from that. But these five are the only ones that are obligatory. Anything else outside of this is going to be Sunnah. So of course, the first one he says here, al-Aidain. 
So the first Eid, uh, like the first you know, like Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, both of these, the, the prayer for them is Sunnah, and it's always it's done in congregation as well. And uh, he'll talk about this in, in its own chapter as well. Uh, well, Kusu Fani, and these are also the two that are done together. Uh, well, it's and these are also um, the other, this is the fifth of them. Then, and this is the, the prayer for rain prayer. And this is also going to be talked about in its own chapter at the end. And so these are the ones that are done in group, though, that are sunnah um, as well. And you could also add to this, of, uh, he's going to add it later, but also tarawih, he's going to add this at the end. But this is also something that is done in group. Uh, that's a sunnah in group. And then, he, then the next thing going into um, this, he says, was and ashra raka. So he says here the, the sunnah, uh, like the, the sunnah, or like these prayers that are done in a, like that follow the obligatory prayers or like that are, that are put together around the, the prayers themselves like that time. Is he says here of the first, or 17 of them, and the first of them, uh, the first two, raka tel fajr. And so, of course, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that uh, these two are better than the world and everything that's in it, uh, better than the dunya and everything that's in it, of course. And these are the two that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he would never leave these. So if anybody is going to like pray, like they're going to pray to two rakahs, a sunnah, and they don't know any, any other sunnah, they should at least do these. You know, and of course, this is, um, this is great for someone to do, and it's easy for someone to do as well. And he also says, And so he says, in four, before Dhuhr, and he says, and two, afterwards. And this is a, um, there's, there's a hadith about this, um, that, that was four before them, and two after it. And if you want to do the four together, as four all together, this is permissible. Or if you want to break it up two and two, with a taslim in between the, and the two, then this is also good. And this is, um, some, some of them say this is better because there's more, uh, there's more dhikr in it. Um, for that, and, and Allah knows best. But both of these versions, if either you do four all together or you do two, two, they're both good. Uh, and then he also says, and two afterwards, and this could also be um, four afterwards as well. Um, some of the other um, hadiths, they talk about four afterwards. Um, and if someone misses, say they come into the, they come into the, the masjid um, before dhuhr, and they, they only have time to pray two, they can pray this at the, other, at the end of it. So any of these that were there at the beginning, they can also be prayed at the after the prayer, and that was there, and it's not, and it's actually in its time. So it's still in its time. Its time is for dhuhr, and of course it's sunnah to put it beforehand. And if they can't make it for whatever reason, then they can pray it afterwards, no problem, and it's still considered a day. Uh, and so these are four, and then there's in um, two after, as he says here, and then also he mentions here, and these first two, just to go back on the two for fajr and the four and then the two afterwards, these are of the ruwatib. The ruwatib of that means like that they are done regularly. And then he gives here four, he says, asri, and then there's four before asr. He mentions these here, and there's a, there's a hadith um, that the Prophet Sallallahu talks about um, that Allah, uh, may Allah forgive the person that says, uh, uh, that prays four before, من حافظ على أربعة ركعات قبل الظهر وأربعة بعده حرمه الله على النار. This is a hadith for the four after dhuhr. But there's another one that is um, that Allah will forgive this person for um, praying um, that that prays four before asr. Any other question? So you know how you said four before salat al -Buhr? Yeah. What about the two rakah? Um, when you are entering inside the masjid before sitting down. Yeah, so these two rakats that are for, for entering the masjid, these are two rakats that are غير معينة. Like this is, this is mutlaka. Like this, this can be done any, any way that you pray any rakatain. This is not a specific salah. This is a salah. Anything uh, that is two rakats, it fits this. And so you just have this intention when you pray the, verse, the first, and you can combine these two. Because this is something that it should be done any two rakats. If it's the obligatory salah, you come in at the obligatory and you intend that I'm not going to sit down until I pray these two rakats. Oh, this is four rakats? Okay. Then you've done what is upon you. This is, and of course, if you sit, um, this is before someone sits down. So this fits into any one of these um, salat before. And also there's another, um, there's another general, um, general concept that the Prophet ﷺ said that between every two adhans, there's, um, there's a salah, like a rakatain. So between every adhan and the, the obligatory salah, there's always going to be, or in the, the qama, there's always going to be two rakats. So you can put this anywhere.
So whether it's um, Dhuhr, uh, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib as well. He's, uh, I don't know if you have to mention Maghrib. And also Isha, before Isha. This is also a sunnah. But it wouldn't be considered a watib, but it is a sunnah. Uh, the hadith you said about uh, Allah making Hanar haram for the person that prays. Yeah. Four before or uh, after? And four after. after four before, before and after the. This was the, the evidence for the four after. And he says two here, but there's also four. So you pray, it's, it has to four. be four before and four after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this harama man half that arba, rakatin, and kabla dhuhri, wa arba and ba'da. Uh, of course, this is understood whenever you have these, um, these huge, that reward of Hadram, and this is, of course, this person stays away from the major sins. Mm -hmm. And he also makes sure that if he does make any major sins, he makes Tawbah. And he also does the obligatory things that are upon him. This does not mean that it's a free card. Yeah, if you yeah, just yeah. do this one thing, you don't even pray the regular salah, but I at least pray the four before and four after. Uh, no, and this is, you always, you always take these, 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 these huge uh, rewards, we always take them in the concept that the person is doing what is it called for them to do. Yeah. And the same thing, uh, 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 or like, uh, in that if someone does this certain action, that all of his sins are going to be forgiven from what's before. And, uh, and like for, or for the whole year, this is always, of course, and they, the, the scholars in general, they always say this is something other than the kabir. Anything that is a kabira, then they need to make tawbah for their sake. And if they uh, oppress somebody, they need to make it right, uh, right with that oppressed person uh, or do something um, to make up for that with that person. And if they don't know that person, then there's other ways to go about that. But of course, this is in, uh, in general. Uh, we look at these in, in a holistic, uh, holistic view. Uh, and so the so these are four and before Asr he mentions this and then he also says Warakatani Bad al Maghrib and of course two after Maghrib and this is also another sunnah uh, for someone to do. And uh, and then also with Alathun uh with Alathun Kabla Aisha'i Yu Tiru Biwa Hiratim min Hunna. And so he says in three uh, after Isha and Bad al Isha Yu Tiru uh Autara Yu Tiru it means make witter. Like to do witr, uh, minhunna. And so like then to make uh, make one witr. And this is uh, of the sunnah. Of course, uh, the witr is usually, it's going to be the, the last prayer that someone does at night. Um, and this is, uh, he says here to do three, but it should be understood that there's two, and then there's one that's separate. This is not like the, the as we talked about the four, for, for Dhuhr, it can all be prayed at once. No, for it's best, it's, he should pray two, because this is the Rawatib, is two. And then another one for Witr is also Sunnah. Like the, and that's Witr is to, um, to do, do one, and do one that way. And of course, Witr, there's many ways to pray uh, Witr. Um, and he's going to talk about, and the next thing he's going to talk about, he says, وَثَلَاثُ نَوَافِلَ مُؤَكَّدَاتٌ And so like there's three of the nawafil. And this is another term for, it's not rawatib. Rawatib is something that you would do that's connected to the salat in their times. And he says here for nawafil is something that is like outside of that, uh, um, that connection to the salat itself. He says, salatul layl And of course, salatul layl uh, in general, this is something the Prophet he used to, he used to pray 11 rakat. Um, for this, and, um, and in, a, in a hadith that he said, methna, methna, uh, which is like two by two. And, but also sometimes the Prophet he would pray, uh, he would pray like for witr, he would make this um, many rakats, such as whether it's three, maybe it's one, maybe it's five, maybe it's seven, maybe it's nine. And so the, these are all different ways that someone can make the, the witr, they could make it in this way. Um, but in, in general, he never went over 11. Um, but this doesn't mean that this is something that, uh, as we talked about before, the actions of the Prophet don't necessarily, him doing something this way, doesn't prove that us doing it differently is haram. And especially when this is an act of, uh, of worship. Um, this, is, this is not something, some, some people have said that you can only do 11 rakats in a, in a night, and if you're doing anything more, especially for tarawih, some people, they basically, if anyone does 20 rakats in tarawih, then they mubtada and, and they throw them out on the bus, and the Prophet said, so never, and let me zid alay. Um, so, uh, like, this is, this is something that is for people um, to pray as many as they want, this is good. And if they want to just pray any salat, any time, as long as it's not the time that's makruh, good. There's no problem with this. 
Uh, and this is, this is something that's going, of course, at night. This is of the best prayers um, because this is the time when people are sleeping and when the, the heart is most open to listening to the Qur'an and also reciting with a, uh, with, like, with a, with a voice that is uh, allowed and also for someone to, to really ponder the meaning of the Qur'an. This is of the best times for um, Salat al And of course, if someone wants to do it like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi then that's 11. 11 is good. And also, he used to do this very long rakat. So some of the rakats, of course, like Bakra and Ali Imran and Raqqa, and then also like Nisa and Ma'idah, or like in this, all of, in two rakats. So of course, um, that's, that's four. And so if somebody needs to take breaks, and if they cut these up into, into multiple rakats and they add rakats, um, then this is, this is better for them. And when it comes to them, this is better for them if they can't do a long rakat hakeza. I like that. And so, so that's a lin. So this is of them. And of course, this is very. Um, this is a very good um, thing, and it's also like makru for someone to um, to start up praying salat al and then leave it off, and to leave it. This is something that's makru. If they've ever started praying salat al they should do their best to always stay up on it. And this is something that, uh, of course, is between them and Allah. And this is something that is uh, a person will, will will find peace, and they'll they'll find uh, like a joy in praying the salat al that they won't find it in any of the other salah. And of course, this was the thing that the Prophet ﷺ, originally it was ordered, layla illa qalila, like to, to stand up for the, for the, the nisfahu, awin uh, minhu qalila. And so like uh, for half of the, the night, um, for half the night or to take a little bit from this, like two, uh, for like a third and whatnot. And so this is something the Prophet ﷺ, and some said was obligatory on the Ummah at the beginning and then it was left obligatory for the Prophet ﷺ, um, afterwards. Or some said it was uh, also not left as obligatory for the Prophet ﷺ, but he rather he did this for Allah. Um, and so this is something that is definitely of the best prayers for us to do. Um, after, of course, the the other ones that we mentioned here, of course, uh, everything after the obligatory prayers. And also he mentioned here uh, was Salat al-Duha. And also the, the Duha is um, the time after the, the sun comes up from the time of, it's about 13 minutes after the sun um, comes up. You have 13 minutes until the sun rises, the, the length of a spear, which is about 13, 15 minutes. 13 minutes is fine. As many of the, uh, many of the scholars have said, 13 minutes is good. And so from this time all the way until the time when that zenith comes, or like when that solar noon, right at that time, there's a little right before that, then you would, you would this is the time of prohibition. But from that time to that time, um, before then, this is the time for Salat al-Duha. And it would be two, two by two. If you want to just do two, this is okay. Um, and then if you want to do up to whatever number you want, this is fine. And of course, like the, the Prophet said, um, it's never that you did like eight. And if someone misses the Salat al then they can make it up in Duha. Like, and this is, this is kafar uh, Allah. So this is a way for them to make up for if they miss something at night that they normally would do. They can pray this uh, in Doha and they, and they can make up for it in that way. Um, and so, of course, the, the Doha prayer is something that's prayed silently. Um, uh, what yeah. do you mean by length of a spear? The length of a spear, the Qadr al This is what comes in the, in the, in a hadith. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he commanded people not to pray while the sun is rising, until it goes past the length of a, uh, of a spear length. Qadr uh, al And so when the, the length, like if you were to put a, a spear on the horizon, like how long is this? And so like this is what they say is about 12 minutes. A lot of times you'll have that shuruq time. Like it's above like the of spear? Yeah. So like if you were to have a spear, a spear length on the, on the horizon, you'd see like that spear, spear length on the horizon, you see that the sun came up a certain length. Um, and, um, this is um, this is something that so we don't fall into the prohibition of praying while the sun is at the beginning of its rising from the time that it starts rising until a little bit after that it'll come up when he talks he'll talk about the prohibited times of praying and this is of them so after, from the end of that time to um, the the time right before the when the sun is at its actual peak um, these are all times for um, the sata duha. Uh, and so this is also uh, of these, of these. Uh, of course, Salat al-Duha has very many, there's a ton of benefits for them. And of them is that, like this is um, sadaqah for every single joint in the body. And that there's sadaqah every single day that the sun uh, rises, then there is a sadaqah for this. And of the ways to pay this sadaqah for every single joint that Allah has given us uh, is for us to pray just a duha. So if you pray two rakahs of duha, then you, pray, you made sadaqah for every single joint that Allah gave you for that day. Uh, and so this is Salat al-Duha. And also, and that's two by two, as I mentioned before. And also any of these salawat, if somebody wants to do it in a group, 
They're allowed to do that. There's no, there's no problem with someone wants to, to pray some of these salawats of the, the noafim. They want to pray these with someone else or someone wants to join them in that and they pray it together, there's no problem with that. And this is something that uh, some of the Sahaba used to pray with the Prophet وسلم, when he was praying these. So there's, there's no problem, and even in Doha, um, there's no problem with someone praying alongside somebody else. But of course, like to make it, uh, to make it like a strong habit to only pray with somebody else, like this, this could come into an area where it's um, like it's close to bid'ah. But this is, if you don't take it as a habit, there's no problem with praying with other people in these um, or doing these sunnah. Sometimes, maybe someone wants to pray salat al-layl at a masjid every once in a while. They have a night, they have a qari, and it comes in, and he prays salat al-layl, and he leads people, uh, and they like his voice, so they they stand up, they pray salat al-layl, and it's just a random night. Yeah, it's fine. There's no problem with that. Yeah. One thing I see commonly, the uh, like if somebody entered the jamaah mm-hmm. late, most of the jamaah is finished and he's praying the rest of himself, or if he's praying sunnah, people join them for a for their mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah. Yeah, and there's there's no problem with that. The, and we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about it later. But in general, the the person who wants to pray his fard and he doesn't want to pray it by himself, he can pick anyone up as praying a sunnah or fard. It makes no difference for him. He still gets the reward for the jama. Okay. Yep. What if um? Well, I, Even if he's making up a prayer. A few weeks ago in the rehab, I was praying we were like we had a jama, and then behind me there was a line, mm-hmm. and once. We finished our salah, and the line, everybody behind us prayed by them, continued by themselves. Mm-hmm. Right? But the two people who were on the complete left side of that line, one of the like, guy at the very end started reading out loud, and that made the guy to his right side pray behind him. Oh, he joined into him? He joined into him. Yeah, there's no problem with that, inshallah. Yes, no it's, with that? Yeah, there's no problem with that. Like for someone, if someone, someone's praying when fatted, they're praying by themselves, they're and then they even after they went into that, if they're praying by themselves now, mm-hmm. for them to join with someone else, there's no problem with that. And he was part of the original jamaah. Yeah, yeah, there's no oh, problem okay. with that. Because now he's munfarid. No. Yeah, and, and like the Shafi's, they said there's no problem for a munfarid to, to pick up with someone else who's in another salah. He just follows him now. Okay. And of course, like he follows him where, wherever he's at, and he also takes the number of rakats that he was doing, and he does the number of rakats that's for him. Like if he already did one or two, yeah. and this person is doing four, then of course he's not going to do extra. Mm-hmm. He's already done one or two. He would just pick up with him and wait for him, or he would just finish it before the other person after he um, does more. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no problem with that, even though it's strange, and I don't, I don't know anyone who does this. Yeah. But that's that's the first time I heard someone doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it better? Of course, like praying in Jamaah is better. But the person that already prayed with Jama'ah, he already got the reward for praying in Jama'ah. But maybe like praying in Jama'ah again, you know, this is, um, inshallah, there's no problem with that. And that's also getting a reward. Yeah. Well, but the, the Shafi method is totally fine with that. There's no problem with this, this prayer whatsoever. Um, uh, the <coughs> and so this is, uh, so that's the Salat al Doha, and also for Salat al Tarawih, this is something that is also um, Sunnah. And this is, um, and this is something that the Prophet he did this for a few days. He did this for like three days, and then when he saw everyone was gathering to do this, he he stayed he stayed inside and he didn't go out and lead the people at at this time. And he prayed by uh, he prayed alone for that night in Ramadan, so that um, like he says, uh, and yuf, uh, uh, and so like that he didn't want this to become something that is um, that is obligatory in people. Of course, this was of the rahmat the rahmah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he would, he would, if he knew that something, there was a chance that if he did something always, that it could become obligatory. Like maybe Allah would make it obligatory or that people would um, think that is obligatory. So he made certain, he made certain like steps with certain actions such as like duha, he didn't pray this. Like for the most part, he never prayed this prayer and yet he was, he would tell other people to pray. He prayed it, there was a couple times that he did pray at this time, but there are certain things that he wouldn't do like just to make it easier for the rest of the ummah, uh, even though it's something that is like mustahab for someone to do. Uh, and this was of the things that he left. And then when the, the time of uh, Omar came around and he gathered the people behind, and he, of course, he said, And so, like, this is um, something he called a bid'ah. Of course, this is a bid'ah that was already established in the deen, so it's not something newly established in the deen, but it, rather it had its basis. Um, but he was bringing something back. Um, 
And so this is a so this is something that's that is um, very like this is a sunnah that is to, uh, that is to do, and also as he said here it's muakkadat like this is very very highly emphasized muakkadat as he said talatha tu nuafan muakkadat means that this is very highly emphasized. Is there a difference between um, salat duha and ishraq? It's the same thing, same thing, same thing. Ishraq just means that you do it right away at the beginning of its time, yeah. and duha is is uh, more general. So it's from the beginning of that time, that's Ashraq okay, would be at that beginning of that time. Yeah. But if you did it later, this is also good. You know, all of this time. Yeah. And so that's uh Salat al Tarawih. And of course it has the the, the number of rakats that um, that are there with the, the twenty some rakats. This is something that is um, that they used to pray this at the time of the Sahaba. Um, so for anyone to say that this is bid'a, that the the Sahaba, uh, the Sahaba were doing something bid'a with that amount of rakat, and this they they need to have some type of evidence for that. Um, but this is this is something that is um, that is and that is a uh, that is very very uh, highly established. And if someone wants to do tarawih and they also want to pray um, salat uh, witr for themselves later, or they want to pray that, then they could pray along with the person, and then they could just add a single raka for witr to make it odd. I mean, to, to not make it odd so that they would make it even. So just add another rakat. So if you're praying with someone, they, they finish it off, say they're praying 11 rakat. And so at the end, they say, we're going to make witr. Okay, if you want to pray with them to get that, um, the reward of praying with them, you can pray with them and then add another rakat. At the end, when he gives his taslim, you stand up, pray the last rakat, and then you can make your witr uh, later on if you're going to do that and you're make tahajjud or something of that sort for, for Ramadan and whatnot. Allah ta'ala ana. And so the next thing he goes into, is he's going to go into the uh, shurut salah So what do we, the conditions for salah? And these are, of course, uh, very, very important. As all of the conditions also are negators of salah. All of the conditions are also negators. And a condition is something that uh, without it, you won't have the, like, you won't have the salah. If you don't have the condition, there'll be no salah. But if you have the condition, it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily mean that there is salah as opposed to a rukun. A rukun is something that is a part of the salah. Without it, there's no salah. But it is an essential part of the salah. So like wudu is not necessarily a, a, a part of salah, but it is a condition for that salah to be accepted. Um, and so this is the, the shart. And so he's going to talk about this. And if the condition at any time in the salah goes away, then this is something that breaks the salah. And so all of these conditions will later come in when we talk about the things that break salah. We're going to talk about all these conditions are things that break the salah. Um, so if they're lost inside of the salat, then um, the salat is broken. Um, there's minor exceptions, but in, in general it's that way. So it says here, Fasl, وَشْرَائِتُ الصَّلَاةِ قَبْلَ الدُّخُولِ فِيهَا خَمْسَةُ وَشَاءَ And so he says that there's five of these conditions before coming into salat that are um, that are obligatory, of course, before coming into it. The first of it, تُحَارَةُ الْأَعْضَاءَ مِنَ الْحَدِثِ and so he, in here, he says that um, the tahara needs to be done for the, the actual limbs. Of course, talking about like um, having wudu and also the um, from janaba. Uh, so making sure that the, the person is tahir. Uh, and also one najasi. And so min al hadithi one najasi. So if there's any type of najas on this person, then this is something that would uh, invalidate his salah from, from the very get-go. And, and this is a condition that he gets rid of all these nudges. And of course, this is we talked about this in uh, in the bab talking about istinja. And also, we talk about this when it comes to what we're wearing. Like if something is not uh, from a dead animal skin that wasn't um, slaughtered properly and whatnot, or wasn't uh, like the hide wasn't um, tanned, then all of these things would come into this this nudges as well. Uh, and so, and also this would also come across as clothes as well. It needs to be free from nudges. And so these, these, these are the first two. And of course the evidence for, the, for that when it comes to the, the, the clothes and, the, and whatnot is what Allah said, وَثِيَابِكَ فَتَّخِرْ And many of the professorin they said, وَثِيَابِكَ فَتَّخِرْ means that this is something that someone needs to make sure that they clean their clothes. And when is the time for that? Of course, like for salah. وَاللَّهِ تَعَلَىٰ عَلَمْ And so he says here, وَسَتْرُ الْعَوْرَةِ بِلِبَاسٍ طَاهِرْ and so he says, and also the person needs to have covered their aura with libas and tahir, with uh, clothes that are that are tahir, that are clean from this thing, uh, from any impurities. And um, and the, the evidence for this as well is khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. And uh, Ibn Abbas, when he referred to this, uh, that this is for uh, this is when someone should. When he talked about this referring to masjid, here is the time of salah or it's the time of sujud. 
Like in the, when someone is coming to pray, then he needs to make sure that he's wearing clothes. And of course, that cover his aura. And we'll talk about at the end of, uh, we talk about this, we'll talk about the end of the aura for the man is between the rukba and the surah. Surah or rukbutain. So the surah is the belly button and anything between the, the surah and the, the, the knees, all of this is aura as well as his, um, as well as the thighs. Thighs are aura as well. And um, also the back, the lower back is also aura and uh, less of shadid. A lot of people will, um, they will wear like t-shirts, t-shirts and pants. And whenever they go into record, whenever they go into sujud, they're breaking, they're breaking their salah. Um, because they don't, like they're showing, they're showing either their lower back or even worse than that. Uh, and this is something that breaks the salah because this is the, the aura for the, for the, the man is what's between his, um, what's between his belly button, like he made a circle around that to the waist, all the way down to the, um, to the, the knees or the thighs. And the thighs are aura. And this is the, this is the, the majority of the ulama are upon this, uh, upon this uh, opinion that the thighs are aura. Um, especially when it comes to salah. Yeah. So if you're praying behind somebody and when he goes into ruku, you see that, his shirt comes up a little bit and we see his lower back, do we break away from praying behind him for ourselves? If, uh, if it's something that he can quickly be reminded and he can do this, then this is one thing. But say, say if, if he's like this and there's no, and it's something that's major, mm. this is, and you would pray by yourself. How can he be reminded though? You could say SubhanAllah or something of this sort, but this is, this is sadly, it's a bad problem. That's a bad problem. Like I've seen it a lot when I pray with a random person. Yeah. Like when I pray with random, I come into the masjid and I see someone praying. I usually try to look for someone with a thope. Yeah. You know, because I don't know who these people are, if they're going to be mindful of this. Um, but I've had this before where I, where I got into prayer with a guy and he went down. It was more than lower back. And I, and of course, I, I know that his prayer is belted. And if I know that his prayer is belted, mm -hmm. there's no way that I can pray behind him. Yeah. Yeah. Would your salah break for looking at somebody else's aura? The looking at uh, someone's aura doesn't break the salah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Of course, you shouldn't look at someone's aura purposefully. Okay. <laughs> but if you see it and you know that, okay, then you're not, and also if you're praying, you're not, like, you're not mukallif. Uh, you're not, you don't have to study that yeah. imam. <laughs> You know, like you don't, you're not. If you see it, then you know that this that this is something. And if it's something that's it's khafif, yeah. like it's something that is little, like it doesn't happen. And he, he fixes it right away or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe he knows that there's a problem, but he fixes it right away. This is something you can it can kind of overlook. What if it's like yeah. something like, for example, they they feel the breeze, right? So, but it happens every time they go into sujood. It every they're time. Always, they're always just pulling down, you know. Allah Musta. Yeah, it's it's not good. If it's if you're gonna if you're following like an imam that everyone's behind, this is one thing. But if it's just a single individual, I'd break into my own thing. Yeah. I'd pray my own salah. And you you had the intention to pray with someone, and this <laughs> and inshallah, like you get rewarded for your intention. And you break that salah yeah. and you start. You don't no. You you pray by yourself. As soon as you see that his salah is invalid, okay. you now intend that you're praying by yourself. Oh, okay. From that time, you're you're fine. And what happened before? That's before. Do you repeat the rakah or you just... No, no, you keep, you build off of where you're at. The only time you would repeat is if you came into rukur while his salat was belted. Hmm. So if you came into rukur and, and you like got rid of that first rakah, you didn't pray the fatihah in. You went into rukur with him and his aura was showing and he was already belted. Yeah. At this point, he can't, because he's the one who carries that, the, that pillar for you. Mm -hmm. And since you know his salat no longer was carrying that pillar, you have to come up with that rakah. That's the only time you have to do anything this extra. This was this was if you if you went into yeah this would be like the first one. Yeah. But if you went into Rukura while his slot was belted, yeah. this after you saw him, right? Yeah, or you saw that that's a, that that raka for him. Mm -hmm. You saw that raka for him was belted. And then you went. You saw uh, and you and you didn't pray that uh, you didn't you didn't recite the fatiha. Okay. At this case, you're you're missing a fatiha here, because he didn't take that fatiha for you. Normally, if you come in at Rukura, he takes the fatiha for you. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you no longer the the fatiha in the madhab of Shafi, the fatiha he takes the fatiha for you. So if his salat is batal, then that fatiha is on you. But if his salat is good, then he took it for you. So if his salat is batal, this is the only time that you would have to come up with another rakah to make up for that rakah. Would his salat be batal while he's standing up or when he? He broke the salat at some point. You saw that the salat was broken. 
Like you saw like when you went to Roku, for example. Yeah, you saw it, say you went into Roku right, and you saw that you broke his salah. So you repeat that. that then you would, make a, you would make another rakah for that, yeah. Mm. No. yeah. This, is, this, is a, this is a bad problem. So like, um, let's say you guys are praying, <coughs> and then when he enters, it, because the imam enters the Roku before you, right? Mm -hmm. and that's when he says aura is it shows and that he's wearing something that something like a tiny t-shirt would you re, like would you just stay and recite fatih again so you're yeah okay yep. because you don't have to go follow him once you know that his his yeah. record is baltana mm -hmm. you know that okay yeah. that from that point you would stop yeah. and you you're still standing so, so you might as well yeah you keep going where you're at Allah must done. And of course, this is something that we as, uh, we as people that are learning, as students of knowledge, we should make sure that we tell people. Yeah. You know, this is of the Amr bil ma'ruf, munahina al munkar. And this is, this is sad, but this, this has become a serious problem. And, and Allah must done. Is there al adr bil jahl? If somebody doesn't, like, if somebody normally, like, if they're praying and they didn't know that their awra was broken and they went through their day, and they didn't realize that maybe they, they like some of their awara um, did this. This is something in general they would be forgiven for that, that they don't know. If they but know. if someone tells them and says, hey, you, your awara was showing the whole time, then this is, and then he knows. There's no, there's no jahil here. How about if you don't even know the awara breaks the song? He would move on from there. He would, he, you, would, you would tell him from there? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he would move on from there. Yeah, okay. Inshallah. <coughs> we prayed behind people who his awara showed in the past. Like right now, as I'm no, that that's jahl. That's jahl. That's my fault, inshallah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Allah must is is definitely is definitely an issue. But um, this is this is the the state that we're in. And of course, uh, this is one of the reasons I really like. I would hope that anyone, if they are going to wear pants, there's no problem with wearing pants. You can wear pants all day. But make sure that you are ready to pray salat any time, and that you're not going out outside with short shirt. That every time you go into the court, that you're going to be breaking, you're going to be showing skin. Yeah. Like this is, um, someone should be mindful that, of course, the biggest thing that they do within their within their life is salah. You know, like after, like this is the the biggest pillar of Islam as a Muslim is salah. Yeah. So someone should always be prepared to to make salah wherever they're going and not be left in that. And also another issue alongside of this that happens is sometimes people have these um, distressed genes. I think they call them distressed. I don't know what they call them these days. But they're, they're torn purposefully. Oh, no. And they're right on the thighs a lot of times. And these thighs are showing skin. And this, this skin that's showing from the thighs, if you see skin, then this is a part of the aura that needs to be covered. And so if somebody does find themselves in a situation where they, they did this thing, just put a piece of paper down there. Just stick a piece of paper if it's like going to hold or something, anything. As long as you don't see the skin, that's all that matters, you know. Or you just put a patch under anything, you know. But you got to make sure that your slide is good, you know. Is tightness considered? No, it's, the tightness doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Really? And this is for the women as well. For the women. Okay. Yeah. So, but of course, like, for like for adab, yeah. you know, like etiquette with Allah is, of course, wearing nice clothes, yeah. and not wearing like, um, <laughs> what is it, like yoga pants or something like this. Of course, like this, this someone should at least most of the time women know that they have like a certain, certain thing that they wear for, uh, for salah. And, but like technically speaking, it doesn't break salat as long as everything's covered. That's you know, a lot of stuff. So if a woman was in her house, and that's she could the, wear yoga if pants. She, it, her salat would be sahih. Okay, okay. As long as she's not showing skin. Okay. Right. If she wore pants. Yeah, the salat is sahih as long as she's not wearing is showing skin. And if she's in the presence of non mahram men, then in this case she needs to be um, she needs to be covered. Not be showing anything. This is one thing, and this is another thing. The awra that we talk about in salah is not the awra we're talking about in front of men. Mm. These are two different things. They, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be mistaken. Um, yeah. In front of men, does really baggy pants? Does that count as hijab? Yeah, as long as it doesn't show anything. It doesn't show the hajam. Like it doesn't show any of the. Details. Yeah, there's no there's no problem with that. Of course, you take into consideration the 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 times. So if you're in a place where any woman who wears pants is going to be looked at in a bad way mm -hmm. because everyone around her is wearing like a, a, a very good like ibaya, mm -hmm. then in this case is like she shouldn't go against these people mm -hmm. with what she's doing like wearing pants. But if she's in a place where she has a say she has a long a long something that's loose fitting that covers like a, a, like her legs and nothing is like shown mm -hmm. like none of the the body parts are shown, then there's no problem. However, she does even if she's wearing a hoodie, 
she wears a hoodie and she call it Deza Bahari or something of this sort. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as, of course, like there's certain things that shouldn't be shown, mm-hmm. like from the from this, this shouldn't be shown. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, for those who hold the opinion of the niqab that it's obligatory, then of course that's a that's another thing that should shouldn't be shown as well. And this is the the uh, the aura that is talked about in the babs of salah is not the aura that is talked about when it comes to men. So these these should always be separated, though. A lot of confusion comes when people put these two together. These are two different things. Yeah. Um, and the like the the agreed upon or like the the Shafi opinion that is held the most weight that's given the most weight is that the woman is supposed to wear niqab. This is in front of a janet. Uh, in general, this is the the Shafi opinion of the later, the later comers in Shafi. You'll never find any of the the later Shafi method, like the people of the later, that ever say that it's okay for her to show her face. In the beginning, maybe there's there's rooms for debate, and of course, it's a huge debate. Um, uh, but in general, the when we talk about the aura in salah, this is one moldor, and it should never be put there. And a lot of times, a lot of people talk about the aura in salah, and this is not the you're talking about a different issue now. Um, so um, this is something that um, is, it's a it's a it's a long conversation. So maybe we'll talk about it later when we come to um, when we talk about the the details of the the aura for the women. But in general, the aura for the woman in salah, everything needs to be covered except her face and her hands. And her face is the same face that she washes. So she washes here to here. This is not face. So this should be covered <coughs> um, for the women. You see some of the some of the women they'll wear kind of hijab here. This is good. This is much better than wearing it this way. Because this is technically not face. And this is and she's supposed to be covering everything except her hands and her face. So like this would this is the better thing for them to do. Allah. And so of course this is and also the covering. The covering means you can't see skin. You can't see the color of the skin. So if someone's wearing um, if someone's wearing something that's shafaf, like something that's very thin, and you can see the skin under it, this this does not does not count. But if it covers the skin, and you don't see it. Even if you were to see like light, and you can kind of see like the hajam, but you don't see the color of the skin, this is fine. Um, and so when wukufu ala makan and tahir, and this is an, the next thing that he brings in here of the the shurut or conditions, is standing in a place that is tahir. He means by wukuf anything that you're touching while you're in the actual act of salah. So if you're while you're standing on something, you can't be standing on something that's najis, as well as you can't be making sujood with your head on something that's najis, or putting your hands on something that's najis, with the with the exception of like bird droppings. Um, this is something that because of the problems in the masjids, a lot of times there'll be lots of birds that they they have their nest right up at the front row, like, <laughs> in one place that is that. And so this is this is something that because of the necessity, this is something that is, there's no problem with that as long as it's not wet and you're not wet when you're touching it. And these are these are the two things. Of course, we talked about dry on dry, no problem. But it's the wet on wet that's the that's that's the issue when it comes and when here in particular, I say as long as his his face is not wet while he's touching the bird driving, this is no problem. This is the Shafi method, and also with the uh, and as long as the bird droppings aren't wet when he's touching it, so. These things, inshallah, there's no problem um, with that. And this is a problem in Egypt. And I didn't necessarily see the same problem in America, but here it's definitely a huge issue. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and this is, um, so in this, in this particular um, condition, this is, the, this is the view of the Shafi'i method that the, the, the place itself needs to be pure. If you put a rug down on top of something that's impure, then you are on the rug. This isn't you. So this is um, so this doesn't count. Say you know that there's like there's there's nudges on the ground. You just put a rug over it and you pray. No problem, as long as the the rug isn't actually soaking in the nudges, you know, and you're not stepping on the nudges that now is on the top of the rug, you know. So um, this is fine here. Uh, and also he says here, well, ain will be al waqt. This is also another condition. A condition for the salah is knowing that the time has come in. Very important. So if you just stand up, you start praying, and you don't know what time it is, or you don't know that the time went on, and you didn't even think about the time. You just woke up and prayed Fajr. <clears throat> maybe you prayed it in its time. Maybe you didn't. Maybe it's not time yet. Maybe uh, maybe it's afterwards. But you didn't even look at the clock or anything. You don't have no clue what time it is. You just prayed. This this salah is uh, invalid. Because from the conditions of salah, it's to know that the time came in. So you need to know that the time came in, or done some type of ijtihad to go and know that the time came in. 
as the, of, of course, because the Salah is upon the, the believers, Kitab and Malkuta, according to time. So the time needs is a vital part of the Salah. We need to know that the time came in. <coughs> about that, how about if somebody did just ahead, um, and then later they found out that they were early, and then when they found out it was the time? Did the, did the if they knew for sure that they prayed before it's time, they need to make up the, the Salah. If they know for sure, if they did their ijtihad and they realized that they prayed on time, they did their ijtihad, this is good. If they did their ijtihad and they realized they prayed after the time, then they 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 prayed it. It's it's qada, technically, it's qada, it's not ada, but they prayed it in their ma'zor. They did their ijtihad. And also, was al qibla? And this is facing the Qibla. And so um, facing the Qibla is also that. And also making sure that they do whatever they can to make sure that they're facing the Qibla. Like whatever. And of course, tech, uh, like if we can see the Kaaba, we need to see it. We need to be facing and we can't turn away from it. If you can see the Kaaba, you're there in the Haram, you're inside, you can see the Kaaba, you can't be facing, like, can't be facing the Kaabas here. You can't be facing this way, where you are no longer facing towards it. You have to be faced towards it. And like there, of course, they have like the, the like all the tiles are pointing towards the Kaaba, but the Asif Shadid, I've seen people facing this way. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> and the same thing, if you can see, if you say you're in Mecca, you're not in the Masjid al-Haram, you're in Mecca. You should be facing the, the Masjid al-Haram. And the Asif Shadid, I've seen people <laughs> facing this way, and the, and the road's this way. <laughs> and tell people, if you ever see someone like this, tell them, you know, like, this is the, the Qibla, let them know. Um, and so this is, in, in the, and so facing the Qibla is something that they must do. And if they're outside of uh, Mecca, they face Mecca. And if they're outside of um, like that general area, then they face like Saudi Arabia and whatnot. And of course, if they're, um, and we have our, like the ways that we use our the compasses and whatnot for the Shoda Shroud, there's no problem with that, inshallah. Um, and like these compasses kind of do the HTN for us. Um, like that we have on our phones with GPS and whatnot, and this is good. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, and then also, he says here, and it's permissible to leave the Qibla in two, two instances. And he says, and this is not like, uh, if someone, what he means here, like Musayifa, which is when someone's in battle. Someone's in battle and they, they're in war. You know, like the time is still kitab and malkuta. Like the, the salah needs to be prayed in its time, no matter what. But if this person's um, in that, then he can um, pray either facing the qibla or away from the qibla uh, while he's in this in this state. Uh, and this is uh, so while someone's in this this hard uh, this battle, they can they can pray away and pray facing away from the qibla. And this is for like um, obligatory salah as well as other salah. And then also for wafid nafila, and so specifically for the, the sunnah or nafila, fi safari al rahila. And so, like, if someone is traveling, and this is even uh, a small traveling, it doesn't have to be the traveling that we break our salat in. It can be a small matter of traveling, any traveling. Um, the safar here is not the, the long safar that we, we say is like 53 miles or what is it, 80, 80 kilometers. This is the, any, any type of traveling, even a small amount. Um, so if they're on the other rahira, which is of course like on a riding beast. Um, but this, like we would use qiyas in this, in this thing and we would say if someone's in a tuk-tuk, they can pray. Uh, if, someone's on a, if someone's driving taxi, they can pray. Of course, as long as they're not putting someone else in danger. And normally you would start off the prayer Face the Qibla, when you say Allahu Akbar, you make it takbir to ihram, you would face the Qibla when you start, and then your Qibla from then on is the, is the road where you're going. So the, the road that you need to be going, this is your Qibla, until the end of your prayer. Uh, and so this is something, of course, for someone, uh, maybe someone's very busy and they can't pray all their noafim, that they would want to do, except that they are going from one place to another, and this is, this is fine for them. Uh, they could do this, and they, uh, and of course, they don't have to do all of the motions of like the sujood and whatnot. They can just do this with their head, uh, and say the things that they they need to say in the salah. And then, of course, for the person who is in the, doing sunnah, he's given much more leeway in what he's doing than otherwise. But of course, this is only for n nafila. Like so, the person who um, who needs to pray obligatory salah, and he's um, and he's like in a car, he needs to stop the car. If he's if he's in a car, he needs to stop the car and pray. Like, you know, there's no praying in obligatory salah in the car. If he's in a, and of course, it's the same thing kind of with the bus. A lot of times it's very difficult for someone to stand up in a bus, face the Qibla. They would have to stand up in the bus, face the Qibla, and do all of that while they're facing the Qibla. And if the bus turns, they need to keep facing the Qibla. 
and the same thing with a train, you can kind of do this. And the, uh, the same thing with a, uh, with like a, uh, with a boat or with a, with, which is like a boat is the plane. All the, um, the plane would be like the same things that we talk about the boat, we'd say it for the plane. Um, but you need to face the Qibla the in this, in, in these scenarios if it's obligatory. It doesn't, you don't get a, you don't get away from that. And facing the Qibla in general means that you're not, not facing it, which <coughs> means that you're not you're having your back to it. And like, if you have like a, a 30, 30 to 45 degree angle, where the Qibla is somewhere here, this is good. Like if you're, but if you're away from it, 30, 30, 45 degrees, then this is where you would no longer be considered um, facing the Qibla. Unless you can see the Qibla and you know you're not facing it. That's, that's when it becomes, uh, like where you, where you see it, then you have to be right at it. Yeah. What if you're in the plane, how about like the Durura? Durura, if you're, there's, you have to pray, you have to pray and it's time. Yeah. A lot of times the prayers, you can pray in the plane, but if they do ever get in a problem where you can't get out of your seat, then you're like a person that is in a boat. And the person that's in a boat can pray I'm sitting down, like say there's turbulence, mm -hmm. and they're not going to let you out, and the time is going to go away. Uh, and you have to stay in your seat. This is like the person that's in a boat that is, that is tossing and turning, and they sit down while they're praying. How about like the facing? The facing, they, they would still face the direction. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you can, you make sure they're facing the direction. Yeah. Yeah, Allah Allah. No, but if you're, say, say this is the Kaaba, I'm, I'm not for sure where it is right now, but if I was this way, I'm not even facing towards it. Hmm. But if I'm like this, you know, like this somewhat, you know, I'm not like away from it, but this is like definitely away. Um, and so like they, they usually say around like 30 or 40 degree angle that you need to be like facing in that, in that degree. If somebody doesn't know, then they use whatever jihad they can, and, and can they see the 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 flight is going like away from Saudi Arabia. So, so they do what their the they like. do with their body. They kind of face if they're in their seat, and they can do this. They're doing this, you know. They pray this way. Yeah, they're they're this way. They're the that their trunk is that way, but they just face with their torso the way that they can, or as much as they can. Of course, they can live alone. That's something like Rosah. And a lot of times the, the prayers, there will be a time where you can find a place. And of course, I always recommend if somebody is going on a flight and they can join their prayer beforehand, join the prayer beforehand. Don't get stuck at the end of um, Asr and you haven't prayed yet. And you can't do anything. You're stuck in your seat and you don't have wudu. You know, like, it's definitely, um, that's, that's a hard place. And, and be mindful of the times as they change when they do that as well. Because sometimes you're running against the sun, sometimes you're running, uh, you're running with the sun. So if you're running, a, like you're running into the sun, your time is gonna go away much faster. Yeah. So, so of course, if you're going, if you're going east, you're going east, you're going into the sun, and your time is gonna go out before you know. It. So keep that into mind. Yeah. Say my seat is this way on the airplane. Yeah. And the khibla is behind me. Allah and must the have. flight and the flight attendants they say you can't unbuckle your seatbelt or turn back. So what, what should I do? You pray as you can. So you pray as you can. You pray as you can. Yeah, sure. How about the awqat when you're going into the, like uh, against the sun? Going against the sun, eh? Towards the sun. Going towards the sun? Yeah. Oh, then this, this gives you more time. Oh, like yeah. if you're going, oh, if you're going towards the sun. Mm. It just it shortens your time. If you're going towards, if you're going east, then you're always going to be shortening your time. Which time do you follow? Oh, you follow the time, that the place that you're in per currently. So let's say you're you're on a night you're on a night flight to from America to say to Saudi Arabia. So on the way somewhere you're going to start to f see some light in the horizon. Once you start to see that light, you know it's Fajr. You pray. So you go for kind of these times, and you can kind of like the plane time, the plane time where you're at, where you're at apparently. Yeah, and of course you're not going to find these. Probably, probably won't find these on the the website. Like on your on your phone, your phone probably won't calculate for you very well. So just do a little, do a little work. But of course, since you can combine salat, this helps you. Like this gives you some somewhat, um, and you'll basically you'll know after a certain time. This is definitely about the door. You know, like this is after the door, and and definitely you'll know when it's asr and whatnot. So um, this is this is something that's helpful. Any other questions? And so the next, um, the next chapter that he's going to go into are the Arkan of Salah. And because of time, I think we'll leave this so we can take this all at one go. Uh, because, uh, of course, this is the, we'll be talking about the actual, what's inside, what's inside of the Salah. And we'll take this all at one time, inshallah.
Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 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 Wa sall